I think it's time we talk about Trek and Pulse. I'm sure there's a lot of you out there that are probably like, oh, I don't I, mean, I don't, I don't want, I don't want the trekking pole. Old people use trekking poles, and I'm super strong, and I don't need trekking poles. And that might be true. Old people might actually use trekking poles too, but maybe, uh, maybe old people are smart. So here's the thing: trekking poles, and I'm not going to go into like a huge diatribe of why you need trekking poles. I'm just going to say if you're not using trekking poles and you are backpacking, you are leaving on the table a ton of energy savings. And the reason being is that when you use trekking poles, you are using almost your entire body. You can push yourself up hills and you're, you're preventing your knees from getting smashed going downhill. It's just as good going downhill as it is uphill. And everyone that I've had used trekking poles in the past, they, hated it first and then when they finally click when they finally get it then they get it and they're like oh trekking poles are pretty awesome if you don't want to use trekking poles fine but i want to go over the different types of trekking poles i have three different styles of trekking poles oh here we go one this was my first trekking pole ever and i had no idea what i was doing but i think i did a pretty good job because i had a cork handle it looks like some sort of aluminum. Here's where I went wrong. These things are freaking expensive. And that's probably why I chinsed on it, because I didn't want to spend the money on something I didn't know about. Well, here's the thing. These types of trekking poles, they, they twist like this, and then they collapse. So you undo it, and you tighten it, and then you, you're good to go, right? It doesn't, doesn't work. Oh man, I just don't tell the wife. Well, here's the thing. What ends up happening with this twist style is that they'll just collapse on you. They don't walk very well, so you're real strong and you're twisting it and you're, you're good to go. But as you're walking, as you're doing your, as you're doing your thing, eventually uh, they slip and they untighten from some weird reason. And then all of a sudden you're walking and your pole is now like six inches shorter than it was before. And that's fine, but it's just really annoying, right? The thing is, there's not a huge price difference. There might be, but it's not, it's not drastic. You're already spending a lot of money on trick and pole anyhow. You might as well get one that's like super functional. Long story short, these are really, really annoying to collapse and extend. And not only that, but I have this set, Lanky, that the leg on the bottom doesn't, it, it doesn't even collapse anymore. There's a bunch of dirt in there. Um, it, it's too tight to collapse down. So that's a problem if you're trying to store it, it's always this length. So this one you saw has three sections. One, two, three, and they twist, right? This one has, the upper section is a quick lock type thing, right? You just quick release, quick adjust, speed lock is what they're called, I think. That's up top, down below. See, I can't even, I literally this thing is, it's, it's never gonna come. This thing is completely stuck in the upright and locked position at maybe 115. Look, there's these little digits on here. So this represents your wherever you need to, that's how you adjust it, right? So you go 110 or 115 down here, and then you do the same thing up on this side, right? So 115 down here, 115 or whatever it might be, so that you there's not a cattywampus uh, section, right? Well, that's great. I was like, oh, cool. I, I'm gonna buy new trekking poles and it's gonna be so great. And oh, I'll do the speed lock up here, but I'm not going to do the speed lock down here for some stupid reason I have no idea. Well, I found out that speed lock is way better because you can, you basically, let me just show you right here, right there, this guy. 
So when you open this guy up, you just tight to tighten it to make it tighter or looser around the deal. You just do that and it's good to go. Literally in seconds, you can be all the way or really, really small, right? But as it sits now, this is probably like, what, three feet? Two and a half feet, something like that. That's as close, that's as small as it's gonna get because I can't get this lower section to collapse. So that sucks. And the other thing was the grip. This is cork. This is some sort of something. It's like a pad, it's some sort of, sort of weird pad thing, which, I mean, what the heck, I don't know. It's just a, a handle, right? Well, just, for your own information, if your hands get really hot, you're gonna want um, cork. Or if your hands are on it all the time, basically cork is really nice. If it gets wet, it's not slippery and it doesn't get gunky. Cork is really nice on your hand if you're really hot and you your hands sweat. So that is those two styles of trekking pole. And we're just talking about how they function, right? And then, on the Pacific Crest Trail, I was given the cork light, okay? Speed lock, cork light, cork handle. That's nice, very nice. A couple thousand miles under these puppies. Okay, and they're hardly even worn down. Nice and, oh, it's like, a, it's like driving a nice car. But here's the thing, both, all, both sections, all three sections, whoop, speed lock, bam, bam. Done. So I'm at like, I think I'm like a 115 guy, right? Boom, done, ready to rock. And then, so this is fully extended. Boom, that's one section. That's the last section. Toss on your pack and you're good to go. I'm telling you, they're a little bit more expensive, but you want the speed lock. It will, it will not drive you insane. You're going to love me for it, I promise you. Uh, it's just that much easier. If you have a shelter that you're using to pitch with a trekking pole, you don't want something to collapse on you like these guys. It, this isn't a bad trekking pole, but this is just better. And you might as well just spend the extra money because this is not gonna frustrate you. This will not collapse on you. If it does, you just unlock it, tighten up the little nut, put it back, and call, and call it good. That's it. So my advice is if you're looking for a trekking pole and you're trying to figure out, because it doesn't make any sense. There's no good information out there. There's a bunch of different models. These are all essentially, there's some carbon fiber ones. They're all the same material, it looks like, but this speed lock saves so much frustration and if I were you in terms of um, in terms of handle I would go with cork I wouldn't do anything fancy up top these ones um, a quick note on the cork light and I'm sure this one probably works as well but I know the cork light for sure you can remove the top section and it can become an ice axe so you can put an ice axe handle on the top of this guy so you don't have to have an ice axe. So if you're going through ice country or snow country, you're basically walking, you have an ice axe handle that sticks off this guy. And if you feel like, you know, you stick it in the, the, the snow, something like that, right? I never had to do it. So I would go with the cork. It just, it's cooler on your hand. Last note, there is one, one more style of trekking pole that I don't have, but I saw it. Kind of like a tent pole. They look like a tent pole, like you pull them apart. I really have no idea if those are great or not. If you have experience with that type of tracking pole, put some comments in the bottom, let me know what you think. I would appreciate your feedback because these are my experiences with these three different types of tracking poles. Thank you so much for joining me. I'm gonna be publishing more content, so hopefully it's helpful to you. If this video is helpful, let me know, subscribe. Thank you so much.